That's not a knife. This is a knife. Eh, not really a big knife. Hey, so today we're going to talk about sheaths. In fact, as a leather worker, this is probably one of the first things you're going to probably be asked to do or you're going to want to do, and that's make a sheath for your knife. Um, and of course, it doesn't hurt that as a leather smith, I also have knife makers, custom knife makers like my friend Keith Hadley from Devil's Tail Forge. He wants me to make knife sheaths for him, and he wants to learn how to make simple ones for his, uh, his own products. So we're going to talk about making sheaths. Stay tuned. Today, we're going to, as I said in the intro, uh, talk about knives. We're going to make a sheath. Now, every single knife, almost every knife could be made in a, a multitude of different kinds of sheaths, depending on its usage, depending on how it's going to be carried, uh, depending on the conditions you're going to use the knife, and of course, the shape of the knife itself. Um, and construction, how you want to put that leather, that uh, sheath together. Some of you are novices and you're like, I just want to do it as simple as possible. You might be a bladesmith and you don't really need a fancy knife. You just want something to put it in. And they might order a special sheet, specialty sheath, but you just want to be able to create a basic sheath. Um, and of course, some of you might want to be looking at this in terms of advancing more. Um, I'm not going to pretend to be super fantastic sheath maker, but when it comes to sheaths, it is fairly straightforward. And the key is understanding the principles and the things that you need to look for to create um, a successful knife project. So one of the first things, of course, we talked about was what kind of knife are you going to be using? Okay, so you could be using one of these, you know, kind of like a normal straight knife. This is from Sweden, um, and it's just it's just a standard knife. It's got a little plastic sheath, so more of a more of a bushcraft kind of thing. Um, you got your classic boot knife. All right, this is notable in terms of two things. One, it's got a little retention snap strap. Okay, and two, it's got this clip. This is a pretty common clip um, right there that goes on the back of knives and um, I'm going to point out one other little feature in just a sec about this knife because looking at sheaths that you can find is really instrumental in telling you how to build sheaths in general and then you've got your kind of another standard straight knife um, you know so these are just some cheapy knives I had lying around and this is like a one-piece sheath it's kind of flimsy um, but you notice, and then here's where I start talking about details, that in this case, they did stitch it, but they also used these rivets, okay, to uh, kind of hold it. There is, uh, it's just folded over. Um, and it's actually missing some things. There's no welt. What is a welt? A welt is key, especially for knives, um, and depending on how they're constructed. Uh, if we look at this knife, uh, you can see that there's actually three layers of leather. Okay, and uh, you can see that the outer, the two outer layers, and then that inner layer that you can just you can sort of see that runs through there. That's the welt, and that means that I can like move the blade side by side, and it's cutting directly edgewise into the leather, not into the stitches that hold this together. And that's a key component is a welt. So we do this because of a couple things. A, to protect the stitches. B, because the blade might be actually rather thick and we can't just slip it in between two pieces of leather with no additional thickness. This helps compensate for the blade thickness. This is especially important when you do have a knife like this that uh, it's got a, a, a significant cross section. It's not huge, but um, and in this style knife, you want to be you don't want it to be so firm in there and hence the retention strap. Um, and there's a couple other things that we're going to learn about this kind of knife that we need to look at, like liners and things like that. When we look at this one, it does not have a welt, okay? And in part, it doesn't necessarily need it because this is put together with those rivets and that sort of, those sort of prevent the blade from cutting at the, this seam. Um, so, but, and you know, the rivets are a really easy way for you to build a knife without ha with having just minor leather working skills. So we're going to proceed on and sort of decide what we're going to, which knife we're going to use and then how we're going to build it. And we'll also, as we go on, try to cover the other aspects of that. 
So the first thing we need to do is to lay out the design for the light, the knife. Now you can do this either creating a pattern or you can just do it directly onto the leather you're going to use. A note about the leather itself, uh, veg tan is preferred for the, any of the leather that's going to come in contact with the metal. Chromium tan, that softer leather that you tend to see around, um, while it can look nice and is more supple, the chromium salts that is used in the tanning process can impact the way the metal and actually cause um, some deterioration or some tarnishing or some, it's, it's, it's bad for the metal. That's the short version. Um, so it's best to use veg tan leather. And then the other part is thickness. Um, as you know, may know, leather comes in ounces. So you, uh, this is where the thickness of the leather comes in and how important it is um, because it comes to use and what you're gonna do with that knife. Um, if it's a particularly larger knife or one that's gotta be more durable, you're gonna want thicker leather. leather. At a minimum, you're really gonna want five to six ounce leather. Um, and uh, upwards of there, depending on what component you're using and even the part of it. For example, on this knife, um, this is super flimsy and like it would rock and probably not really sit well in a sheath. I would want, now this is all one piece, but if I was going to do this in two pieces, I would want this bottom part, this part that the loop is in, to be of thicker leather so it's firmer and it holds up better when it's on your belt. The top part, okay, like here, on here, doesn't need to be as thick. It, there's really not as much, there's not much tension on it. Um, in fact, this knife has two fairly thin pieces of leather sandwiched in, that sandwiches in between that welt. And in addition, there's also something called a liner. Because we have this little dude here, this clip, that clip actually goes through holes in this outside of the leather. Well, you don't want the blade rubbing against the metal components inside here. So there's actually another piece of leather on the other side of that, okay, called a liner, that helps protect either the metal from rivets or stitching if you're going to use, say, maybe stitch a belt loop on here. Um, so that's another component that will build into what we're making just to show you how to do it. Um, and it's also useful in cases of how you're maybe using your leather. Um, and we'll get to that in just a second. So now we'll look at patterning and setting up the leather um, and whatever else we can accomplish in this particular video. Okay, so we've decided we're going to do this particular knife, right? I am not going to duplicate this sheath exactly. Um, I'm going to make a different kind of more of a straight belt knife sheath. Um, but it will incorporate many of the elements that we need. Uh, one caveat, I'm not necessarily going to use as thick of the leather in part because of the nature of this blade because it's not really very thick, okay? It's not a very thick blade. So it's not going to need as much of a welt. Um, so how do we do this? Well, you have to sort of think ahead of time. So in, in some cases, I'm like, do I, how do I want this to mount? So if I'm going to go with more of a straight leather sheath that hangs off of a belt, um, then I'm going to want to plan ahead of time, at least for whatever I consider to be the top of the blade, or the bottom of the blade, I should say, I need to allow enough to have that part to hang off the belt. Okay. Um, it just depends on the style you're going to do. Um, if it's going to fold over, that's a different kind of setup. So you kind of want to think about those things as you move forward. Okay. This is really important. Um, otherwise, you're going to mess up and you're going to have to redo stuff. Now, part of that planning has to do with the side of the leather that we're talking about. So we've got the flesh side, the rougher side here. So we have to think, where do we want this to face? So if this was hanging in a blade in a belt situation, um, we kind of look at this is what this would look like, right? And if we're talking about this part, right, and that's the rough side, we don't really want that. We kind of want the nicer, smoother side to show. But we also have to consider that on the other side of this, the part that's against your leg, you might want that smoother. So you that's a decision that you have to make, okay? 
or in many cases the client has to make. But for now, let's just figure out, well, how are we going to um, get this laid out so that it is the way we want. Remember that if you are marking on the underside of the leather, the flesh rough side of the leather, that you are upside down. Leather has two sides and you have to be aware of that and make sure that you're doing mirror images of stuff. These are mistakes that I've made a couple times, so something to consider. To that end, um, in, in terms of like how you're going to position this, I like to do the top part, okay, the part that does not involve how it's on here first, okay. Um, so I have to position, think how this is the blade, so this is the top, all right. So I want to flip it so that when I flip it back over, I'm working, you know, the top side is showing. This also allows me to mark directly on the leather. As such, I don't need all this extra because that's not going to be part of the handle. So I can actually work up here like this. So let's get into the tracing part. So one of the easiest ways to do this is simply to take any kind of marking device you have. You can have a pencil. I like to use these gel pens. Nobody's going to see this part, okay? So that's why it's important to kind of get a good judgment. You want enough room. Um, to allow for the welt, the extra thickness that you're going to create on here, as well as how you're going to put it together. Stitches don't take as much of an extra width as, say, rivets or bolsters do. Okay, so that's the other thing you have to consider is if I'm stitching it, I may only need a quarter of an inch extra, whereas if I'm going with rivets, especially the bigger ones, I may need up to a half an inch to compensate because those those rivets will really pinch that leather down and the blade won't move so well, okay? So, to start, you just simply trace, okay? Now, I like to do a little bit past it just to compensate for this part because I may not know exactly how I'm handling that sometimes, okay? And you saw how it jiggles a little bit. Honestly, that's okay. We just want to get a basic shape and an outline. We can fix that up a little bit. The advantage of, of this is that I understand, I have a, a kind of an idea of the size of the blade, right? We are not done yet. This is the actual blade size within a little bit. There's a little wiggle room in there and that's okay because the leather will compress and we will need that. So the next thing I have to do is I have to compensate for the seam. I want to be able to stitch all the way around this at least of an eighth of an inch in from the edge. Okay, so, and then I'm going to want like an eighth of an inch in from that end, right? So that's about a quarter of an inch. Quarter inch, five sixteenth inch, something around there, okay? So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. One, you can literally just measure all the way around, okay? And then just connect the lines and sort of sketch it in, okay? The other way is you could use a tool like this. All right, and you don't really need this anymore. Um, and you could sort of trace along this line. You just set this up to be the, the thickness that you want. And you would sort of draw along the line. It takes a little practice. And I can sort of see where my line is, okay? The other option is you could take a compass with a pencil in it, preferably with a soft lead. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to just adjust that to the, the, the extra that you want, the seam allowance, so to speak. And you just go around and you can, again, make some marks with the pencil. Okay? And get that tracing so that you have that extra thickness of the blade. So I went ahead and did the tracing. This is actually the other side, but it was one of the examples I did. So now I have, all right, the extra thickness of the leather, okay, plus that's where the blade is, and a little bit of this just for reference, including this line here. We'll want to make sure we have that. Um, if you have more of a substantial guard, you want to compensate for that um, and just kind of know where that's going to be, and it really depends on the kind of sheath you're making, okay? So now that we have this, we need to cut it out. And for that, um, again, just use whatever your favorite cutting tool is. I just use a simple utility knife. Um, it, it's probably the best tool for that. 
um, especially if you're just an aspiring leather worker. Um, and th this particular kind, as I've said in other videos, has the snap off blade, so you can have a real sharp blade as you cut. Okay, so cutting these is fairly straightforward. If you have a perfectly straight edge, you might, of course, try to use a straight edge, um, you know, to go along there. I tend to do these by hand just because that's where I'm at. Slow and steady. Now, with most of these thicknesses of these knives, if you don't go the whole way through, you probably need to change out your blade, okay? Um, and ideally, you're not going to want to mess with it too much, especially when you get on these curves. It's really important to have a particularly sharp knife. So I'm just going to, not that you know, need to know how to do this, but cut that off. Maybe a good idea to wrap that in tape, but remember, we are cutting the outside lines okay that we made before um, I have this little tip down here all right that I may want to make bigger in case I want to say have a um, rivet or a grommet down there for maybe a tie down uh, that's a decision you need to make uh, before you get too far along um, that's again that's that's up to you because um, this first piece that you're cutting all right so I'm gonna I'm gonna extend that a little bit, all right. That's gonna allow me to to sort of do that. And there's nothing wrong. And again, I'm on the wrong side of the leather, so nothing wrong with making a couple little adjustments. This will allow me to put that grommet there. Remember, when you're cutting, you always want to keep your elbow in line with the blade. Okay. So if your elbow is way out, it's not gonna work as effectively. Okay. And then I'm just going to cut through and see how that, that cut way better, okay? Way better. And then in this case, I'll come at it this way. I'll change my angle so that I can make those things. Now, I'm, if I'm going around a corner, I lift up the blade so I'm using as little of the blade as possible to make that corner. It creates a better axis. And it's okay if you cut a little extra past it because otherwise you're going to be trying to get that out at some point. Now I have this this part here, um, just a little bit, there we go. Okay, I have this part here, it's disconnected, um, or it's not completely disconnected. I wanna just make sure I'm not second guessing what I'm doing here, um, and you know, make that cut. Okay, so now I have a little bit of extra, but I have the basic outline of my blade. Um, it's probably a good point, a good point time at this point to go through and if I've got any rough cuts or anything that I'm not happy with that maybe I went a little too far that I can adjust and make sure that everything is nice and, and consistent there's no little bumps because all all of those bumps will transfer through to whatever your pattern is you could cut this out with cardboard first if you wanted and then use it as a pattern as well. Okay, this will actually would actually serve as the front of the, the knife, this part. Okay, um, and uh, I of course cut this initially backwards. So and you know that's a, a way to learn a lesson is because this depending on how the blade would go would be wrong. Okay. So this would make it more of a left-handed versus a right-handed blade. But it still serves its purpose as a pattern. Now, if I'm looking at this, I can kind of see I have just that little nub there that I'm not quite happy with. So this would be, a, and because I'm looking at it from the other side, I can kind of see that. I just want to take a little bit of that off. Again, it doesn't need to be super perfect because you're going to clean this up some. But it's always good to kind of get it as close as you can. But either way, I can now use this as a pattern. Okay, so um, I know I need to have this part here, and then I need to have the long part. And then we'll also need to create a welt. Okay, so I can use this as the pattern, right? So in this case, I am going to need this shape for the top, 
okay, but with the right side. Now, if I was doing this in black and this wasn't the fuzzy side, it wouldn't matter, okay? So what we'll do now is we'll trace out uh, two more pieces. Okay, so we've got everything traced out. I have the blade sitting on the back piece. This is the part that will have the hanger on it. I'm going to just basically cut two slits through there for the belt. Um, I wanted to sort of look at how this shape is going to fit. So um, I just want to put a little... So as you can see, we have the whole shape. Get this a little bit. There we go. That's better. Okay, so you can see the whole shape, right? This is the butt part and the, the far end of it. As I lay it on there, I put a little dot where the blade sort of is going to sit so that I kind of know that. Okay. So I can kind of get a look at how that blade is going to sit on that leather. All right. Oops, it shifted on me. All right. And then, of course, I would just take the piece that's going to go over top, which is this one, and that is going to fit where the scabbard is going to be, all right? So that, or the sheath, that's the other part that goes over top. And you see how much thickness we've got. Now, part of that, of course, is part of this guard that's going to come away. Um, but we wanted to just kind of look at that. So I might actually curve this, this handle a little bit just to make it look a little bit cooler um, because it just kind of doesn't look right. Um, and there's a, a, a lot of different ways. Now I used a thicker leather for this. This is seven, eight leather. Um, but that's going to give us now there's one other piece that we've got to cut yet. And that is, um, a piece called the welt. Okay. Now the nice thing about tracing that blade is it essentially gives you the welt size. Okay. So if I cut that piece out, because it was a little bit of a wiggle room, I'll have the actual welt, which will basically just sit inside there. Okay. So what we'll do now is because this one, you don't actually ever see it except for the edges. Um, it doesn't really even matter which side that I cut it from as long as it's the right shape. So I'm going to cut the welt out um, as well as the outline of this. I may leave this part here that I'm not quite sure how I'm handling it up there. Um, I may leave that until I'm sure. Okay, so we'll just cut this the same way we cut the other stuff. Um, again, nobody sees this part. Okay, get those out of the way for you so you can see. All right, so remember when you're cutting the curve, you want as little of the blade making content so that you're kind of not fighting against that length. And then as you get to a longer stretch, you can let that blade angle kind of come down and it almost serves as its own ruler. If you've ever used a circular saw, you know what I'm talking about, is if you have too much blade, it, it's kind of harder. Now, when you're cutting this way, all right, I am cutting towards the good part of the leather. So I have to be careful that sometimes when you're cutting, all of a sudden it'll come free and then you're in trouble because you cut through the part of the blade that you need. So um, you just need to be conscious of that. Also notice there's really not a lot of purchase to hold on to this and I'm keeping my fingers well away from where I need to be. I'm going to just stop just short of where I need to be. And then I'll come back in here and just push down. Okay, and I might even do the same way there. All right. And then there might be a little area here or there that I need to just clean up. And I'm not quite through. Oftentimes when you're cutting on curves, you don't always get a clean cut depending on how that's working. And now I have the welt. Okay, so this is how this will go together is I've got this piece here. This piece gets sewn into, okay, my seam is here. And then I'll have this piece sit on top of that, like that. All right, and then of course, this is the part where um, 
my uh, it goes through the belt loops okay and then the blade would fit inside there okay and I have to cut a little bit of that edge off yet okay so now I have all my pieces cut out I made some final rough adjustments to the hair uh, again this is one of the last pieces and it doesn't it's not connected to anything else so I can save that in terms of what I'm going to do for the that part and how I'm going to finish it if I'm not sure what I want to do um, because the blade has a little bit the handle has a little bit of an arc I kind of maybe want to follow that uh, it's really up to choice uh, and of course you know some design issues as well so but now we can see the different parts okay so you have the back part, this is the part where we'll cut those slots in. We don't need to do that just yet. Um, as well as um, the base. We have the welt, okay? And the welt will fit all along this line, okay? And then we have the front piece that will fit on top of that. Okay, and of course everything will be glued down. Um, you want to make allowances perhaps for rivets at the top. Um, because a lot of times those are points where you've got a lot of stress so you want to maybe have enough make sure that you have enough thickness in terms of either your welt um, or just the general body of that that you can if you want to and in, and in this case remember we allowed enough room down here to put a grommet in so you could put a uh, some a leather strap through or leather thong through to, for a, a knee tie if you were to need that okay or just for whatever reason okay so in this case, the rough side is the back. This will be the part that goes against our leg, all right? And then this is the part that everybody's gonna see, so it's gonna be smoother, okay? So uh, we've basically done all the cutting that we're gonna need, with the exception of perhaps a liner if we were gonna need one. Because we have a hanger here, we don't need to install a liner um, if we were okay for example if we were going to use a uh, something like this here okay then we would need to have a liner for the back portion okay and there's another reason why you you might consider what thickness leather you use is because you have to use this little clasp you want to make sure it's thin enough that it can function but not so thin that it's not sturdy um, in that case we would just cut another piece like this um, to serve as the liner for the back, okay? And it really doesn't even matter whether it's a rough side out or if it would have been a flesh side out, you're really not gonna see it. It, it, it honestly doesn't matter. Um, it, uh, unless you have some sort of thing, like I did one holster in which there was actually a cutout that came through the front of it and you could actually see the liner color in there and I want, had to be a little more conscious of the leather I used. Um, sometimes people will just make like a little apron that covers the part where um, the strap is because th your blade isn't actually going to catch going out. Um, it's just more to protect it against the metal. So at this point we are done with cutting and the next part is preparation for uh, stitching and glue up and any kind of functional design that we might want to put on there. Okay, so we've got our um, leather pieces cut. We did the patterning and you know, that's the most time consuming part honestly is once you is trying to figure out exactly how you're gonna put that knife together, what elements you're gonna have on there. Um, there's a lot of things you need to think about ahead of time before you even cut the leather. Um, and knowing the correct order of operations so that you don't mess yourself up because you might need to install one part before you can sew the two parts together, for example, is critical to um, being successful in any leather project that you have. So always be conscious of order of operations. Always plan ahead. Um, I know some people actually make paper mock-ups just so they can kind of try to figure out any problems. Um, and that's critical. That's critical. And part of that comes from just knowing what to anticipate, like what problems you might need to plan for. Um, and that's an experience thing. But 
it's really not horrible to be super, super careful the first couple times you do something until you kind of get the hang of it. But you still have to start doing it because you can think and plan all you want in your head. But until you start putting those components together, it doesn't always work out how it works looks on paper. The shape might be the same, but you're, you didn't think about the fact that you have to add those other parts. You have to also consider how you construct the item. All right, so this first session a little longer because we've been dealing with all of those little components. Videos are helpful. Um, really looking at a knife sheath and breaking it down, seeing how it is. Um, it's, it's often not a bad idea just to pick up a cheesy knife someplace um, just to kind of, uh, in a sheath, just to kind of see how that sheath is constructed. Sometimes they're not constructed well, but at the very least you have an idea of what shape you might be going for or what they have done. Um, it's just helpful. Okay, so I'll see you next time and make good shit.